called this is not to scare you, but to prepare you. If you are afraid of what I'm about to show you, it's only because you're not perfected in God's love yet. We are told to seek the things of heaven first, which is courage, faith, endurance, which inevitably will prepare us for the persecutions and tribulations that are coming. Are you seeking the things of heaven or are you living a carnal worldly life after your own pleasures? What you're about to see in this video is very serious and I encourage you to let it sink into your soul so that you realize the hour in which we now live. I'm going to show you things that are happening around the world first and I'm going to prove to you that it's all coming to America. Are you ready to face the same kinds of tribulations and persecutions that have been happening all around the world? As you're going to see, America is no longer a safe haven. You better strap on your spiritual seatbelt. You better pray for the endurance and courage that you're going to need. And you better stop living in this carnal world and build up your spirit in the name of Jesus. Since 2003, attackers have bombed 70 churches in Iraq alone, and that's only the beginning. We're seeing a very vicious, vicious, vicious attack on Christians in a number of countries. They asked him, will you deny Christ and become a Hindu? He said no. Then I saw the Hindu mob pour gasoline on my brother-in-law, and they burnt him alive, and they burnt him alive, and they burnt him alive. They surrounded the church and within minutes the whole building was on fire. Um, they broke into the house and started beating me. Then they dragged me out front and pulled out a sword. Another person had an axe in his hand. For more than a month now, Orissa has witnessed some of the worst persecution against Christians ever in India's history. 4,000 Christian homes and some 400 churches were destroyed. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. This is all coming to America. This is all coming to America. This is all coming to America. Where we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. We are no longer a Christian nation. We are no longer a Christian nation. Christian America is under attack. The enemy, the mainstream media, from MSNBC's Keith Olbermann referring to pro-lifers as Christian jihadists. Obviously there are people who are with great intelligence who have religious beliefs. I've always argued this away by saying it's a neurological disorder. To CBS journalist Katie Couric calling Christian values repugnant. Its goal, to overthrow God and silence Christian America for good. That according to author and political columnist S.E. Cup, who warns the mainstream media is using its influence to wage war against the nation's Judeo-Christian heritage. Why do you think they, they actually can get away with it? It seems like Christians are the only group in America that you can just take pot shots at and and there seems to be no repercussions at all you're absolutely right and that's because no one is calling anyone to the mat on this I think for the first time the liberal media has someone in the White House who is equally as uncomfortable with public worship as the liberal media is so you have the state and the liberal media sort of working together add to that the fact that Hollywood has always been hostile to religion and if no one is checking any one of these groups then it, it's no wonder this is allowed to go on in, in such a sort of overt way
an egregious example of Christians being charged with a supposed hate crime for trying to preach the gospel to homosexuals happened recently in Philadelphia. Michael Markavich is the founder and director of Repent America. On October 10th of 2004, our ministry was present at an event in Philadelphia called Outfest, which is a taxpayer-funded event which celebrates uh, homosexuality. And we were there to address the public celebration of sin and to proclaim uh, the Word of God and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Markavich and 10 other people carried signs and proclaimed the message of repentance and change through Christ at the event, which took place on the public streets of downtown Philadelphia. Um, when we did arrive, uh, we were interfered with by this uh, militant group of homosexuals who came together to oppose our presence, to basically say that uh, they're not going to allow us to come into the public streets to share the gospel. Police, instead of dealing with those who were acting disorderly, which was the homosexual group who were blowing these loud piercing whistles and engaged in blocking us with these uh, styrofoam boards that were cut into the form of angels, the police didn't deal with that situation even though I'd asked. Instead, police arrested the members of Repent America and took them to jail. Arlene Elshinaway is a 75-year-old grandmother who demonstrated with Repent America that day. I've never been arrested for any reason whatsoever. We were handcuffed, taken into the padded wagon. Uh, we ended up at a, some police station. Ted Hoppe, an attorney affiliated with the Alliance Defense Fund, represented the so-called Philadelphia 11. They ultimately were arrested, charged with disorderly conduct, put in handcuffs and taken away. They were held in jail for about 21 hours, charged and then ultimately released, um, but still facing the criminal charges. After that time, what ended up happening was the district attorney's office formally charged them and included in the charges against them were the, a charge under the Pennsylvania Hate Crimes Law. Pennsylvania is called an ethnic intimidation, but it really is a hate crimes law. And that crime is a felony, and if they were convicted of that, would carry uh, jail time uh, in a state penitentiary. If they had found us guilty of these things, it was worth 47 years in prison. An all-out jihad on Christians is underway. Check out these images. The Muslim Brotherhood carrying out vicious attacks on churches, homes, schools, and even an orphanage. Can you imagine the outrage this administration would express if anywhere in the world Christians had burned 60 mosques? But the administration's response to the attacks upon the murder of Christians, the destruction of churches, some of them 1,600 years old, has been one clause in one sentence. And by the way, it's not just the administration. Astonishingly, Senator McCain, Senator Graham, and others on the right are saying nothing about this, but rather arguing that some magic how this marvelous Morsi Muslim Brotherhood government should be reinstated. We're being cowards and it's fair game on Christians. And oh, by the way, as far as the left, the left, you can excite more sympathy for the, the destruction of the Aztec and Mayan empires than for the destruction of 2,000 years of Christian civilization in the Middle East. This is a holocaust, and we are as silent now as we were in the 1930s. How many networks other than Fox are covering uh, these barbaric, barbaric assaults and upon Christians elsewhere throughout the Middle East? This destruction of an incredibly rich 2,000 year old civilization. And we don't, we not only don't do anything, we don't say anything. Meanwhile, the people of Egypt are struggling against Islamist totalitarianism. And President Obama and Senator McCain are siding with the Islamist totalitarians. Explain why that makes sense for America. Christians may well be the most persecuted religious group on the planet. They number some 2.2 billion people, and harassment can range from loss of life to loss of livelihood. Including discrimination, you're talking 600, 700 million Christians. In about two-thirds of the world, Christians of one stripe or another face some sort of harassment. It goes back to the time of Jesus and his disciples, but is increasing rapidly in this new century. Christians in innumerable countries are under huge amounts of pressure. Throughout the 20th century, communist countries caused the most problems for Christians. Today, however, the fear and harassment is shifting to the Muslim world. Open Doors USA tracks this persecution and puts out a watch list every January of the worst offenders. Open Doors President Carl Muller says in this year's top ten, eight of those are Islamic countries. The level of brutality is almost unbelievable. We're actually labeling it a religious side as uh, extremists there want to exterminate all Christians from the country of Iraq. Muslim extremists in Pakistan have been killing Christians at an increasing rate for what they call blasphemy 
against Islam and the Prophet Muhammad. Christians are being accused of blaspheming Islam by converting from Islam to Christianity. This violence is even happening in Muslim countries that were seen as more secular. Christians have started to be killed on religious grounds in Turkey. That's new. If you're caught as a Christian in North Korea, say, simply leading a Bible study or even owning a Bible, you can be thrown into a labor camp that is exactly like the old Soviet Union's gulag, uh, where people are literally worked to death. Christians have become an endangered species in some countries of the world. Terrorist attacks on Christians in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia have increased 309% between 2003 and 2010. Well, let's begin with Pope Francis saying atheists get into heaven. Pastors are saying it's okay to smoke weed. And let's not forget about the homosexual agenda. We've got a president who says it's okay to have same-sex marriages. Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Lot. Sodom and Gomorrah is going to come back alive. Here we see a Christian preacher being attacked by a homosexual mob. Muslims were accused of beheading two Christians in the United States already. We've got the blatant call for the death of religion by, by famous TV personalities. So you're going to see things like this, shooting at Creflo Dollar's megachurch, pastor killed, two hurt in Illinois' church shooting, American Muslim stoned Christians in Dearborn, Michigan, a judge finds preacher guilty of disorderly conduct for preaching near a bar, street preachers do get killed in the United States, here we go, gunman executes woman while she decorates church, from jailing evangelists to church bomb plots, Christian persecution is on the rise. Here's another attack on Christians while preaching the gospel to a homosexual crowd. Police don't do anything, and they just keep attacking these guys and attacking these guys. Pray for our brothers who do this kind of work, like myself. Evangelist jailed for preaching at a train station. A missionary was jailed in North Carolina for telling officers to repent. Philadelphia police cited this preacher for being flashed by a female heckler. Christians arrested for preaching in New Orleans after sunset. Police vow to target the churches. And this Phoenix preacher was actually sentenced to jail for holding home worship meetings in his own property. Now this preacher was just singing and preaching and was attacked by two men with knives. And then this man was heroic and helped the guy who was being attacked. He was a Walmart employee. Illinois' man arrested for plotting to bomb dozens of Oklahoma churches. International code may force home churches, small groups to pony up, shut up, or go underground. And it just goes on and on and on. Ordinance targeting free speech. There's no surprise. Christians have been deemed terrorists. Watch my video on this. This is not a joke. They will be targeting Christians. They're being warned about Christians who take the Bible literally, and we are being labeled as extremists, terrorists. We will be put on the watch lists and denied guns. Our phones will be tapped. Our homes will be tapped. Crackdowns on universities are no surprise. Bible studies in college dorm rooms are being shut down. And I didn't even have time to get into all the military persecutions and people being court-martialed for their faith in the United States military. This is all coming to America. This is all coming to America. This is all coming to America. Where we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. We are no longer a Christian nation. We are no longer a Christian nation. We